Welcome to Good Shepherd today. We're going to continue to talk about different questions that people have about this is a Christian program. And so we're addressing uh, questions that Christians have. And so sometimes these questions are very uh, hard to figure out on our own and maybe I'll be able to help you if I can. So anyway, today's question I'm going to be talking about, what is the difference between conviction and um, the conviction and condemnation? Now, condemnation is different than conviction. Condemnation has to do with several things. One time, <clears throat> one thing is when we are, when we need to forgive somebody or we want to uh, take care of a situation in our life. You know, sometimes we have a hard time taking care of it because, well, we can forgive ourselves. I mean, we can forgive. We can ask God to forgive us, but sometimes we don't forgive ourselves. So, you know, you know, we can always blame it on the devil, you know, and say, like Cliff Wilson, the devil made me do it. No. You know, the devil gets a lot of credit for a lot of things he didn't do, which I don't really care about how we say his feelings. But still, what I'm trying to bring out, a lot of times we are responsible for things that we blame on the devil. And so, now, condemnation is several things. Well, number one, be the devil condemning you and bringing up your past, you know, and Say, you know, you know, you ask God to forgive you for a certain sin. You ask God to forgive you for a certain situation. But then again, you, all of a sudden it comes up in your life that you realize that, hey, you know, um, I mean, you might say, for instance, you're just kind of having a bad day and things, you know, are not going so good. So, you know, the enemy that can come along and remind you of your sins, which you've already asked God to forgive you for, but he brings them back up. Now that is condemnation when the enemy does that. You have a, a, I would say a certain problem that you had really bad and you ask God to forgive you and you worked on it and got rid of it, but all of a sudden it's flared up. Well, that could be the devil flaring it up to you. And so, but still, that's not necessarily the way it should be because God has forgiven you and you should forget it. So now what would be the other thing that caused the condemnation? You're not forgiving yourself. I heard a lady the other day she had had an abortion, and she uh, many years ago, and it just she allowed this to just torment her all the days of her life. And I can understand, you know, because it's a horrible, horrendous thing to do. But yet, on the other hand, you need to forgive. No, words, ask God to forgive you. Number two, you have to forgive yourself. And if you don't do that, you're never going to have victory. You're never going to have joy. You're never going to have blessing in your life. And so, it's very, very important. So now what should I do? As the scripture says, ask God to forgive you and then forgive yourself and forgive every situation around you. There's a way that is forgiveness is really the best. There is a, the best, there is a wonderful way of for, forgiveness that I want to explain to you. It's called forgiving in the person of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says we need to always forgive in a situation where something bad comes up, even if we're really not responsible or really it's not even our own fault. But Paul said, I forgive, lest Satan get an advantage over us. And so I'm forgiving in the person of Jesus Christ so Satan doesn't get an advantage over us. You know, when they were stoning Stephen, that's what he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. Jesus, when he died on the cross, I'm sure that's where Stephen realize that when Jesus died, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. As we mentioned before, people do certain things because they're carnal. They're Christians, born again, filled with the Spirit. They love God and everything else. But they have a sin nature. Everybody has a sin nature, which has to be mortified by the Spirit. And if you don't pray, the only way to mortify the flesh is to put that sin nature down 
is praying in the spirit and, uh, and being obedient to the Lord. But sometimes people are not, and so the sin nature crops up. And so that creates a carnality in their life, which is what the scripture says, I am carnal, soul under sin. Now, the thing I do, I understand not. Well, that's a big statement if you understand it. It says, I'll do things that I'm not aware of. I am carnal, and I, the things I do, I understand not. That means somebody can be real nice to you, and out of the blue, be real mean to you. And if you confront them, the carnal spirit that tormented you is not the same as the human spirit that loves you. The human spirit that loves you will come back and say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's almost like a split personality. You know, they say, well, I didn't, you know, I don't feel that way. And they really don't in their heart. But that spirit that, uh, that, that how would you say, that attacked you through them, through their carnality, is what you got stung by. So I guess that you would basically call the fiery dart. And so uh, the fiery dart. So that is condemnation. Now, what is conviction? When you really, truly do have a sin in your life or something that's hindering you. You know, God is so loving and so good and so wonderful. He's not going to uh, condemn you like a conviction will. I mean, like condemnation will. He will not condemn you. But he will quicken to you some things, some instruction that's to help you. And by doing that, then he's trying to get us, uh, how would you say, to take care of the situation so that we can live a better life and be more victorious, more happy. So he's always there for your good. Remember, God is never for your evil. He's always for your good. And so anyway, so what is um, um, conviction? Conviction is a work of the Holy Spirit that lets you know, hey, you know, uh, this is not the best thing in your life. And so if you'll do this and thus and so, you can correct that and you have a much more victorious, blessed life. And so... So whenever you feel, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, it's always a spirit in love and tenderness and mercy. Now, if you're hard-headed and you're rebellious and all that, he might get a little more stern with you. But again, conviction is not the same as condemnation. Condemnation is when you kind of deserve what's happening in your life because you won't do anything about it. So we see that, you know, again, conviction is uh, the uh, Holy Spirit trying to chide with it. She's kind of striving with us to get us to, to uh, take care of some situations, but he does it always in love. So anyway, I sure hope this helped you because there's a definite di uh, difference between conviction and also with uh, condemnation. Condemnation can be real uh, tormenting, and so uh, we don't want to be under tormenting uh, spirit. We want to be under the blessings of the Lord. The Bible said, the blessing of the Lord, it make us rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. And so... And the enemy will always create sorrow. Condemnation will bring you sorrow. Conviction will not give you sorrow, but it will bring blessings to your life. Well, anyway, I hope that you understood that today and it was a blessing for you because uh, God wants us to be blessed and he doesn't want us to be under the thumb of the enemy, which is condemnation. He doesn't want us to be continually under... Well, that was our program for today. Condemnation or conviction. Condemnation from the enemy unto yourself, but conviction is from the Holy Spirit in love and peace. Well, anyway, we thank you for watching the program today. And remember this scripture, it says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it hath no sorrow with it. Thank you.